My name is Darren Croft. I'm a research associate here at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History and a professor across the street at Case Western Reserve University. And we're in the vertebrate zoology collections here. Part of my research deals with mammals that are alive today, and that's what are in the cabinets back behind me. We're heading to southern Bolivia, which is a place that we typically go to every year. It's a locality known as Quebrada Honda, where we find fossil mammals that are between about 12 and 13 million years old. Quebrada Honda is a great place to do field work, at least as far as I'm concerned. It is in the tropics, but it's up at about 12,000 feet, about twice the altitude of Denver. So we're way up there, and that causes some problems for some folks in terms of altitude. But it makes for really nice days if you don't get clouds. It probably gets up to the 50s or 60s during the day. You can be out in long pants and a t-shirt, and it's really comfortable. And at night, it usually gets down to freezing. So it does get cold as soon as the sun goes down. And being in the tropics, the days are almost exactly 12 hours. It gets light at 6 and gets dark at 6. We have a bigger crew than normal going this year. There are four of us who are going from Cleveland. I'm going and two of my students are going, a PhD and a master's student. And we also have a woman, Beverly Saylor, from the geology department who's going to help look at the rocks there. One of the big areas of emphasis that we're going to have this year is studying the rocks and figuring out how all the different fossil sites correlate with one another. We also have a professor coming from California and another one coming from Barcelona, Spain, who are experts in looking at volcanic ashes to get at ages and also correlating sites and also looking at the flip-flops of the magnetic time scale to also help correlate sites. We're going to be working with our colleagues in Bolivia. We work with a gentleman who's at the university in Potosi there, and he usually has some undergraduates he brings along. And there are even a couple of folks from Argentina who are coming up and are going to help us do some screen washing, which is taking a bunch of matrix, essentially rocks and dirt, washing them through water, and then we pick them out later to try to find small teeth and bones. On a typical day, we'll get up, We'll have breakfast, and we spend a lot of time just walking around looking for fossils. We, you know, we always call this a fossil dig, but in reality, for the work that we do, it's not much digging. It's a lot of walking. If you find something, you usually can just pick it up. If it's a little more complete, then you might actually sit down and have to excavate it for a while. If it's something like a big shell of a giant armadillo, it may take you a day or two days to clean the whole thing off, and then we'll put a plaster jacket on it. We come back in the evening, we'll have dinner, and then after dinner, we catalog every single specimen that we find that day. We go through and write down what it is, where we found it, and we give it a special number in the field so that we come back, we know exactly all the information that's associated with each specimen. We have a whole variety of different mammals that we found at Cabrata Honda, and one of the reasons we go there is to find new things, of course, so we never know what we're going to find. But the other reason we go is to find more information about animals that we already know are there. On the small end of the spectrum, we might find little rodents. This is an example just to get an idea of size. Tiny little guys. This is a little animal called Quebrada hondomis, which is the mouse from Quebrada honda. It's a little echomyid, rat-sized animal, related to ones that are alive today. On the other end of the spectrum, we might find giant armadillo relatives called Galyptodons. These are huge tortoise-sized animals that had a shell just like an armadillo, but it wouldn't have moved. And sometimes we just find pieces of them. This happens to be a piece of very interesting one. This is from the head. It's got four little horns and it would have stuck right on top of the head like that. Other times we find parts of the jaw and sometimes we find a complete shell. We find sloths down there, giant fossil sloths, a lot of marsupials, which are relatives of possums that are around today. But the ones we find were meat eaters, which is really kind of neat. We sometimes even get remains of giant birds, things that would have been my height but would have had a huge head that looked like an eagle that would have preyed on a lot of the hoofed mammals that we find down there. In paleontology, there are a couple different strategies that you can have when you go to a fossil site. Sometimes you go to a place that no one's ever been before. In that case, you never know what you're going to find. And a lot of times it's new, especially if you're sampling a new time level or you're going to an area of the continent that you haven't been before. And that's how it was when we first started going to Cabrata Honda. Now that we've gone back there many times, the number of new things that we find has gone down. But with any rich fossil site, the more specimens you collect, the more you're going to find, and, and invariably you find some new species. So when we go down there, we always hope that we're going to find something new. And typically we find at least one or two things that we didn't know were there before. But equally important, we get new and better specimens of things that we only knew fragmentarily before. For an example, this is a spe species that is new. It's part of a little skull of one of these meat-eating marsupials, but it's missing most of its teeth. So although it's new, we're not going to give it a new name because most mammals, you have to have well-preserved teeth to actually give it a name because that's what allows you to compare. So one of the things we're hoping to find is some more teeth of this guy. Who knows if we're going to find it or not, but the only way you're ever going to find him is by keep going back more and more and finding more specimens.